Last year in 2022, 4,954 international medical graduates were newly registered to work here in Australia. That's the source from APRA. The question is, can a doctor work in Australia without any AMC exams? Answer is yes, a doctor can work in Australia without any parts of the AMC exams. And no, you don't have to be from the UK or Ireland, US, Canada, but pretty much from any country in the world. For practical purposes, I will divide this conversation into what is Competent Authority Pathway or CAP? What are the types of Competent Authority Pathway? Components of Competent Authority Pathway? Number three, how to apply Authority Pathway? And top questions. Finally, I'll give you my conclusion based on all these factors. Competent Authority Pathway means a junior or non-specialist doctor or GPs have already been assessed by a competent authority in a country which has equivalent health system or similar health system to Australia. These doctors can be immediately granted provisional registration to work, not a limited registration, but a provisional registration to work under supervision in Australia, and they may eventually be granted a journal or a full registration after 12 months of supervised work. And they can work independently in a locum capacity or take up the training positions and so forth. What are the types of competent authority pathway? So the types are standard competent authority pathway, GP pesky competent authority path, a specialist competent authority pathway, and finally short-term training in medical specialty via competent authority pathway as well. There are two components of competent authority pathway. The first is called medical course or exam component. And number two, it's called experience component. Now that's a very important concept. So medical course component, there are two types of medical courses. One is called an offshore course and the other one is called an onshore course. Now onshore is quite simple. It's onshore medical course, which are from medical universities from, uh, you know, UK, Ireland, US, Canada, New Zealand, meaning their graduates after completing the medical degree and after completing their internship can practice on provisional registration here in Australia. There are also other offshore courses that are recognized. Most of these courses are from UK universities. These include MBBS courses from Newcastle University in Malaysia, St. George's University delivering courses in Cyprus, International Medicine MBBS course from St. George University in the US and UK, an MBBS program from Southampton University in Germany, an MBBS program from Queen Mary University in London, but delivered in Malta, an MBBS BCH BAO course or program which is governed by the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and University College Dublin in their Malaysia campus. Number seven, MBBCH BEO, Royal College of Surgeons, Medical University of Bahrain. So exam components include PLAB exams, LMCC or Canadian Medical License Examination, USMLE, step one, two and three, and Medical Council of New Zealand, which is also known as NZREX exam and also Medical Council of Ireland, graduates of medical courses in Ireland, accredited by Medical Council of Ireland. Then there's also a very less known course called National Board of Osteopathic Medical Examiners, COMLEX USA. So if it applies to you, then that program is also assessed as a part of competent authority pathway. Now experience component, which is really a matter of very important significance. So as a rule of thumb, the experience component can only be done in countries with equivalent health system like UK, US, Canada, Ireland, and New Zealand, meaning you cannot pass PLAB and do experience component in Pakistan or India because you could not find a job in the UK after passing a PLAB. However, it is interesting. If you have done LMCC or Canadian License Examination, you can fulfill the clinical experience component in the UK for 12 months at an intern level or US for two years in ACGME accredited residency program. Now it's a completely different debate if LMCC candidates are allowed to practice in the US without USMLE. But in a nutshell, for PLAB or UK, doctor needs to do 12 months of UK experience at an intern level job. Now, it doesn't have to be a training position, which gets frequently asked, but any job with clinical supervision. Uh, for Canada, it involves also 12 months of postgraduate education or residency training. For US, the candidates who completed USMLE part one, two, and three, doctor needs to complete a minimum of two years of graduate medical education within a residency program. And for New Zealand, why the NZRX completion of 12 months of internship equivalent experience. For Ireland, completion of 12 months of internship experience as well. IMGs who are seeking to become GP in Australia can have an option of pesky or pre-employment structured clinical interview. Normally, IMGs need to pass AMC part one for that. But if you are coming from a CAP pathway, then you can also apply for a PESCI pathway directly without AMC1. Uh, now let's talk about a specialist 
competent authority pathway. Uh, it has further two subdivision, a specialist recognition, uh, that is a specialist working with a minimum of three years as a consultant back home in their own country, can directly apply through the competent authority pathway to the respective colleges and get assessed. And they can pretty much work as an independent consultant anywhere in Australia. Number two part of the specialist pathway is area of need, which are desperate for specialist doctor. The great thing is that these areas can be metropolitan, regional or rural. To attract specialists in these areas need, certain specific requirements need to be met by the overseas international medical specialists. If these requirements are fulfilled, these IMGs can work in that area of need as a specialist. This scenario may be applicable for someone who has done MD, MS, FCPS, Arab board in their own country and they decide to apply for the area of need in Australia where they have a better chance of working as a specialist or a consultant in that area of need only. Be mindful, this will not give them an automatic right to work as an independent specialist anywhere in Australia. Now, as per my brief check on area of need sites, the specialists which were required in Sydney alone, they were like most of the jobs were within one to two hours of Sydney and even in Sydney. Majority of them were in dermatology, diagnostic radiology and psychiatry and remaining jobs which I was able to find out were in urology, plastic surgery, internal medicine. Now, area of need GP vacancies is the other thing. They were spread widely across the metropolitan areas in Sydney and spread across most of the New South Wales. Now, this is just for New South Wales. There are other states like Victoria, Queensland, Western Australia, South Australia, Tasmania, Australian Capital Territory, Northern Territory. So they may have their own list of area nodes. So there might be many jobs for specialists with the right credential. So please do check them out. The good thing about area of need specialist pathways that although you are accepted to work in that specialist area, later you may decide to join the specialist recognition program short-term training in medical specialty pathway. The short-term training in a medical specialty pathway is for international medical graduates who are overseas trained or they are overseas specialists and they want to train a little bit more in Australian health system. This duration can be two years or extendable up to maximum of three years. But be mindful, this pathway does not lead to a registration as a specialist in Australia. You're only here for an experience. Once you get that experience, you're pretty much out of the game. However, I do think once you have an experience in your specialty in Australia, in specialties like surgeries, emergency medicine, ICU, anesthesia, it may become a little bit easier to get into the training into that specialty in Australia because now that you've demonstrated that you've actually completed some time frame in Australia. So do consider that that it could be an intermediary step. Now, what are the steps for joining the short term training pathway? Because lots of doctors are asking me about that, that it's somewhat similar to the, uh, you know, MIT training pathway in the UK. So step one is IMG secures a training position first then they apply to the Australian Medical Council for primary source verification of their medical qualifications. Then IMG supplies directly to the relevant college like College of Surgeons, College of Emergency Medicine, Colleges of Intensive Care Medicine using the Medical Board of Australia application form for the assessment by a specialist medical college for their suitability and it's also known as AAMC 30 application for the assessment by the medical college. The medical specialist college will then grant them, you know, approval that yes, you are the right doctor to take up this training position to further your learning experience. IMG then applies with all these documents to the Board of Australia or Medical Board of Australia for a limited or provisional registration. Because we are talking about competent authority pathway, if they are coming from the UK or US or Canada or New Zealand, then they will apply directly to the provisional registration pathway. But then if you are coming from other countries like uh, Pakistan or India or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka, then you can apply for a limited registration because you haven't done an AMC exam. The steps of competent authority pathway are quite simple. First thing is to secure an employment offer. Number two, apply to the AMC for primary source verification. Number three, apply to Medical Board of Australia for provisional registration. Number four, complete for 12 months of supervised clinical practice. And number five, apply to the Medical Board of Australia for a general or full registration, after which you can also apply for a permanent residency and free to do locums and join the independent training programs of any colleges. So my top three questions that are frequently asked in this category are from PLAB aspirants. They would like to know if they can do PLAB first and then go to the UK, work there for 12 months and then later come to Australia via the Component Authority pathway. As I've said before, these PLAB IMGs statistically form a very low number. For example, in 2018, there were 675 applications in the category of provisional registration via the Component Authority pathway by the UK doctors. Out of these 675 applications, only 36 
doctors were formed the PLAB route. So this clearly shows that PLAB IMGs working in the UK will still prefer to stay in the UK due to professional and personal reasons. The second question is after passing the PLAB exam, does that 12 month working requirement has to be a training position? It can be supervised clinical work at any level. So don't worry about finding a training position. It could be any job. Number three question is use of a full membership exam like MRCEM, MRCS, MRCP, MRCOG, plus other membership exam, plus UK work, which leads to a full GMC registration. Would that be allowed to come via the competent authority pathway to Australia? It's still not possible to utilize the membership exam and your UK work experience to come work here in Australia via the competent authority pathway. So my conclusion in 2018, over 1000 doctors were granted a competent authority pathway registration. Majority, 61% were from the UK and 25% from, from Ireland. Also in 2018, 895 special assessment applications were made to the respective colleges in Australia, of which 35% were in general practice, 12.6% in adult medicine, and 52% in other specialties. Of these, nearly half of the application, that is 481, were substantially comparable, which I presume would be from the UK, Ireland, and US. 285 or 31% were partially comparable, which I think would be from majority from the subcontinent, and 118, which is only 13%, were considered not comparable. So overall, a good and a very friendly number. But be mindful, the specialist recognition can be costly, and it costs anywhere between $8,000 to $10,000 for the initial assessment process in the interview. Recently, Australian government announced easing visa restriction and fast-tracking visa application for doctors. This is primarily to attract qualified doctors doctors in general practice and specialists to the regional and rural Australia, also in the area of need. So I think over the next two years or more, the doctors will be coming in here via multiple different routes that includes AMC route and especially from the competent authority route, primarily because of the poor working conditions back in the UK and some other countries in the, those regions like Ireland. Hope you like this conversation. Please do check out useful links in description. Take care of yourself and each other. We'll see you next time with a more useful video. Thank you very much.